Hello, everyone. This is Mark from ACRL in Choice. Um, looking at the clock, we're just a couple of minutes before our scheduled start time of 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and before we get started, I always like to take just uh, a little time to check in with you out there and make sure that the software is working properly and that you're able to hear us um, and that the broadcast isn't garbled or anything like that. So if you could take a second and just drop a quick note into that Q&A box, um, which you can find if you move your mouse over the screen, um, you should be able to find that little Q&A um, button down there that'll open it up for you. And if you could let us know that you're able to hear us and that things are working out just fine, we'd appreciate that. Or if not, let us know too. Um, so before we get started, just would like to check in with each of our speakers. Um, and we'll start out with Lindsay, if you'd like to say a quick hello and maybe where you're calling from. Hi everyone, this is Lindsay Levinson. I am calling from sunny Florida. Great. And then uh, Rachel, would you like to say a quick hello? Yes, hello everyone. I'm Rachel Cray and I'm calling from sunny Cleveland, Ohio today. Excellent. And then Lynn, would you like to say a quick hello? Hey everybody, I'm Lynn Bico, and I'm also calling from sunny Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Excellent. And it looks like we're getting lots of indicators through the Q&A that uh, things are working just fine. We appreciate your feedback. And looking once again at the clock, uh, we are just a little over two minutes before the scheduled start time. So hang with us for just a little bit longer and we'll start up right at 2 p.m. Eastern. Talk with you soon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Dirks, and on behalf of ACRL and Choice, I would like to welcome you to today's program, Building a Digital Library to Support Remote Learning During COVID-19, which is sponsored by Overdrive Professional. Uh, today's session is one in a series of sponsored webinars from ACRL and Choice that addresses new ideas, topics, and products of interest to the academic library community. Free to users, these structured 60 minute live presentations uh, provide the opportunity for uh, interactive discussions on all sorts of issues in academic librarianship. Um, before we get started today, I wanted to point out just a couple of features of the webinar software. Um, the main thing you should be seeing is the slides on the screen. Um, if you're having any trouble with that, you can drop a note in the Q&A and I'll troubleshoot any issues uh, that you may be having with audio or anything like that privately. Um, and please do uh, use that Q&A box to send any questions you may have for our speakers um, all throughout the presentation. We'll take a little time at the end to address as many questions as we have time for. Um, we may not have the ability to get to all of those questions, so we apologize in advance if there are just too many to get to, um, but that does frequently occur. Um, and otherwise, uh, I think we are just about ready to get started. So I will go ahead and turn things over to our first speaker today, and that is Lindsay Levinson. Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending this session today. Um, my name is Lindsay. I am an account manager here at Overdrive. I work specifically with our academic library partners. Um, so, slides aren't switching. All right, so there is uh, our pictures there. I'm presenting today with Rachel and Lynn. They are content specialists on our team. And so the, for those of you that don't know about Overdrive, our motto is a world enlightened by reading. Um, that's what we do. We help to connect people with reading. Um, so it's, it's a great time to be um, 
in the library space right now, we have over 50,000 libraries, schools, corporations, and universities in over 78 countries. So we partner with quite a few libraries, um, K through 12 organizations under the corporate space. It's anything from um, true for profit to um, community colleges, to prisons, to hospitals. So it's a really wide variety of libraries that we partner with. And Overdrive is a certified B corporation. And so that's awesome because we meet the highest standards of social environmental impact. So B Corp businesses um, balance purpose and profit. So at Overdrive, we consider the impact of our decisions on uh, our employees, customers, suppliers, community environment. Um, so we're a large part of a network of certified B corporations that are a force for good um, in the environment. So as everybody knows, COVID-19 has changed everything, the way that we work, the way that we learn, the way we go about our daily lives. Um, and Overdrive really has helped to help libraries and academic institutions to uh, sort of supplement library closure. So I've talked to a lot of academic librarians who their buildings are closed or it's very limited service. Um, maybe just computer usage and study rooms. Some are not letting um, faculty and staff into the actual stacks. So that's where Overdrive comes in um, with the digital content. And so we've surveyed academic libraries um, and 98% of them currently have an ebook collection. And on average, ebooks make up approximately one third of an academic library's monograph collection. And we're seeing that number rise um, in the times of COVID where people are just not allowed to go in and use the library as they typically would. And the four advantages of ebooks, um, Overdrive ebooks, is anywhere access. So you can use um, the, the collection, whether it's browser based, mobile usage, on Kindle, anywhere and anytime access. The library never closes. And a, a thing that, that is really great is it enhances distance and online learning. So students can be a little bit more engaged um, with actually the online content um, and reading books digitally and multi-user access. So not all of our titles have multi-user access, but many of them do, meaning that you can have several students or faculty using the title at one time. All right, so a couple of things that we've heard um, from libraries as that this is perfect for COVID-19. These are only books our students can access right now because of COVID-19 and serving college programs and courses now being taught remotely due to the pandemic. So we've seen that a lot, whether it's a mix of um, in-person campus or completely digital or a hybrid of that, we're able to partner with academic institutions in delivering the titles that they would need, whether it's course reserves or full length lending for our 7, 14 or 21 days. We've been doing things like book clubs or common reads for campuses, all stuff that you can do through Overdrive to serve your, your college and your students and faculty. All right, and right now I'm gonna kick it over to Rachel to talk about lending and access models. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. As mentioned before, my name is Rachel Cray and I'm a librarian content specialist here at Overdrive. And today I'm going to be discussing some tips and tricks you can utilize to help maximize your budget when building your digital collections. Okay, so, um, I do like to put, caveat this by noting that our lending and access models are determined by individual publishers and content distributors. And Overdrive remains committed to working with our publishing partners to make as much content available as possible. Our lending model options allow you to build a digital collection that fits your budget while still meeting the needs of your students, faculty, and staff, whether they're on campus or off. So the first lending model that is our most common is our one copy, one user model. And this is when titles can be checked off by one person at a time and they never expire from your digital collection. Metered access is titles that can be checked out by one person at a time and they expire from your collection after a set time limit or a set checkout limit. 
our newest lending model is metered access concurrent use or MACU as we call it. And this is when titles can be borrowed by multiple users concurrently until all check our checkouts are used. And so that means either if there's 100 checkouts available, those can be used up in the same day, or it could take five years to hit them. Another popular model is our cost per circ model. And this is when you only pay when your users borrow titles. So you set a monthly budget and users can access the titles concurrently until your monthly budget is reached. And then at that point, users can place a hold and the budget will reset the following month and the title will be available again. Our simultaneous use model is when titles can be checked out by an unlimited number of users all at the same time. Another popular access model that Lindsay also mentioned was our digital book club offerings. This is when you can offer community reading programs digitally using simultaneous or bulk discounts. For instances like this, we coordinate with publishers as needed to determine pricing and um, time range. So you could have um, a book club lasting for an entire month or maybe a week, whatever your institution needs. Another access model that is very popular among academic libraries is our recommend to library feature. And this allows users to view titles not yet in the library's collection and recommend them for purchase. We also have another model called demand driven acquisition. And this is a really great option because it allows you to sort of build out um, your collection based on true demand. And it allows users to immediately borrow titles not owned by the library instead of giving them the option to recommend the title. But if the user borrows an unowned title, it automatically purchases the title and it's added to the library's digital collection. Um, a nice, you know, some nice tips when you're trying to make the most of your budget is combining these different lending and access models. You can do this to pair them up so that way you can maximize um, your budget while also meeting the demand. We've seen a lot of institutions maybe start with cost per circ to test and gauge interest in certain areas. Like if you wanted to test um, if Spanish titles are going to be popular with your users, you can try adding some CPTC titles. And if you see that there is a large interest, you might wanna consider purchasing some one copy, one user or metered access titles. And the new um, metered access concurrent use model um, is really beneficial for helping to fill holds quickly. Um, if all of this seems kind of overwhelming, don't worry. We have easy to set up and use tools to help you manage your collection quickly and efficiently. We have a really wonderful holds manager plan that you can use to stay on top of demand. Um, a recommend to library manager plan that you can use to track your recommendations and um, our really versatile smart list that you can use to help you manage the repurchasing of metered access content, as well as get some automated cards from popular publishers that you know you purchase from currently and other things like that. So another note on holds management is, I know this is often overwhelming for institutions, is you know, how to stay on top of demand. Just some tips that we like to provide is, you know, consider filling holds based on price. You can sort your, sort your holds list by price and prioritize purchasing less expensive titles. Um, you can consider adapting a variable price-based holds charts and use this to evaluate buying extra copies. Um, the holds manager plans are really nice because there's no limit to the amount you can have. So you can have separate ones for your eBooks, for your audiobooks, for your fiction, your nonfiction, and have different, um, you know, a parameter set up based on that. And we always recommend buying more often to help fills as they are placed and also utilizing our sales. And I'll get into those in a moment. So this is just an example of the variable price base holds ratio that we recommend for, you know, for less expensive eBooks, a lot of those you can fill at a quicker rate. So maybe set that up with a four to one ratio for some of the more expensive audiobooks, maybe you'll want to set those up a little with a little bit of a higher ratio. And this is all something you can very easily do in our holds manager plan. And just as I mentioned, um, this is a, a chart of all of our set annual sales. And we do have others throughout the years, but these are ones that you can set your calendar to that happen every year 
um, on, a, on this very specific schedule. So like um, June is always audiobook month. So that's a really great time to develop your audio collections and fill holes. Okay, so next I'm going to discuss some current hot trendy nonfiction titles to showcase the diversity and depth of our content offerings. This is always my favorite part as a librarian because we get to talk about books for a little bit. Okay, hey, the first book I wanna talk about is 10 Lessons for a Post-Pandemic World by Fareed Zakari. COVID-19 is speeding up history, but how? What is the shape of the world to come? Lenin once said, there are decades when happens and weeks when decades happen. This is one of those times when history is sped up. CNN host and best-selling author Fareed Zakari helps readers to understand the nature of a post-pandemic world, the political, social, technological, and economic consequences that may take years to unfold. Written in the form of 10 lessons covering topics from natural and biological risks to the rise of digital life to an emerging bipolar world order, Zakaria helps readers to begin thinking beyond the immediate effects of COVID-19. Um, next is The 99% Invisible City, a field guide to the hidden world of everyday design by Roman Mars. This is a beautifully designed guidebook to the unnoticed yet essential elements of our cities from the creators of the wildly popular 99% Invisible podcast. Have you ever wondered what those bright squiggly graffiti marks on the sidewalk mean? Or stop to consider why you don't see metal fire escapes on new buildings? Or pondered the story behind those dancing inflatable figures in car dealerships? With deeply researched entries and beautiful line drawings throughout, the 99% Invisible City will captivate devoted fans of the show and anyone curious about design, urban environments, and the unsung marvels of the worlds around them. Um, white Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad is a really important book called Powerful and Provocative by Dr. Ibram Kendi, author of the New York Times bestselling How to Be an Anti-Racist. This explosive book of history and cultural criticism reveals how white feminism has been used as a weapon of white supremacy and patriarchy deployed against black and indigenous women and women of color. Next, we're going to talk about Group, How One Therapist and a Circle of Strangers Saved My Life by Christy Tate. The refreshingly original debut memoir of a guarded, overachieving, self-lacerating young lawyer who reluctantly agrees to get psychological and emotional, get psychologically and emotionally bare in a room of six complete strangers for psychotherapy group, and in turn finds human connection and herself. Christy Tate had just been named the top student in her law school class and finally had her eating disorder under control. Why then was she driving through Chicago fantasizing about her own death? Why was she envis envisioning putting an end to the isolation and sadness that continued to plague her in spite of her achievements? Enter Dr. Rosen, a therapist who calmly assures her that if she joins one of his psychotherapy groups, he can, he can transform her life. All she has to do is show up and be honest about everything, her eating habits, childhood, etc. And Christy is skeptical, insisting that she is defective beyond cure but Dr. Rosen issues a nine word prescription that will change everything. You don't need a cure, you need a witness. So begins her entry into the strange, terrifying and ultimately life-changing world of group therapy. Christy is initially put off by Dr. Rosen's outlandish directives, but as her defenses break down and she comes to tr trust Dr. Rosen and depend on the sessions and prescribed nightly phone calls with various group members, she begins to understand what it means to connect. Um, Me and White Supremacy, Combat Racism, Change the World and Become a Good Answer by Leila Said. Based on the viral Instagram challenge that captivated participants worldwide, Me and White Supremacy takes readers on a 28 day journey of how to dismantle the privilege within themselves so that they can stop, often unconsciously, inflicting damage on people of color and in turn help other white people do better too. Um, updated and expanded from the original workbook, me and White Supremacy takes the work deeper by adding more historical and cultural contexts, sharing more stories and anecdotes, and including expanded definitions, examples, and further resources. Um, last one on this slide is Humans by Brandon Stanton. Brandon Stanton created um, Humans of New York in 2010, and what began as a photographic census of life in New York City soon evolved into a storytelling phenomenon and a global audience of millions began following daily. Over the next several years, Stanton brought in his lens to include people from across the world 
traveling to more than 40 countries. He conducted interviews across continents, borders, and language barriers. And Humans is the definitive catalog of these travels. Told with candor and intimacy, Humans will resonate with readers across the globe, providing a portrait of our shared experience. Um, Ex Libris, 100 plus books to read and reread by Mishiko Kakutani. Pulitzer Prize winning literary critic Mishiko Kukutani shares 100 personal thought provoking essays about books that have mattered to her and that help illuminate the world we live in today with beautiful illustrations throughout. Oak Flat, A Fight for Sacred Land in the American West by Lauren Retness is a powerful work of visual nonfiction about three generations of an Apache family struggling to protect sacred land from a multinational mining corporation by MacArthur Genius and National Book Award finalist, Lauren Redness, the acclaimed author of Thunder and Lightning. Um, Win at All Costs, Inside Nike Running and Its Culture of Deception by Matt Hartz. Combining sports drama and business expose, Win at All Costs tells the full story of Nike's secret running program, uncovering a corporate win at all costs culture. Um, culture excuse me. Next up, The Changing World Order, Why Nations Succeed and Fail by Ray Dalio. From the number one New York Times bestselling author of Principles and legendary investor Ray Dalio, The Changing World Order examines history's most turbulent economic and political periods to reveal why the times ahead will likely be radically different from those we've experienced in our lifetimes. Looking back across 500 years of history and nine major empires, including the Dutch, the British, and the American, the changing world order puts into perspective the cycles and forces that have driven the successes and failures of all the world's major countries throughout history. Fossil men, the quest for the oldest skeleton in the origins of humankind by Kermit Patterson. This is a behind the scenes account of a shocking discovery of the skeleton of Ardi, a human ancestor far older than Lucy, a find that shook the world of paleoanthropology and radically altered our understanding of human evolution. An intriguing tale of scientific discovery, obsession, and rivalry that moves from the sun-baked desert of Africa to modern high-tech labs and academic lecture halls, Fossil Man is popular science at its best and a must read for fans of Jared Diamond, Richard Hawkins, and Edward O. Wilson. Last book I'm gonna comment on is um, Keep Moving, Notes on Loss, Creativity, and Change by Maggie Smith. For fans of Anne Lamont and Cleo Wade, a collection of quotes and essays on facing, facing life's challenges with creativity, courage, and resilience. This is a book for anyone who has gone through a difficult time and is wondering what comes next. Well, I feel like that basically describes everyone right now <laughs> with COVID and everything going on. And while I don't know what will come next in the general sense, I can tell you that speaking next is my colleague, Lynn. So I'm happy to pass it over to you, Lynn. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everybody. Thanks for attending. Uh, I, my name is Lynn Vico, and I'm a librarian content specialist uh, with Overdrive. And I'd like to briefly talk to you about single source title shopping for academic libraries, how Overdrive streamlines your title selection. So without further ado, we're trying to get that. There we go. Let's go back. Okay, so the challenges of 2020, well, we know that uh, providing digital material to your academic communities has been on the rise in recent years, but if 2020 has taught us anything, it's the need to have materials accessible to remotely, remotely to accommodate changing logistical needs of students, faculty, and staff. Without the aid of a crystal ball, it's hard to know how the daily routines of campus community will settle when we move beyond this COVID period. However, because distance learning, remote work, and other fluid accommodations have become more common over the past several years, and in many cases have become expected, it seems reasonable to assume that the trend will continue for the need for remote materials. Overdrive delivers premium, ac premium academic titles. Partnering with Overdrive to fill your digital library provides a long-term solution for your digital holdings. Not only do we provide premium academic titles, but with our team of content and product support specialists, 
you can supply your campus community with a robust content and with delivery. In the past year, Overdrive has made over 300,000 new titles available to college libraries, ranging from popular and bestseller titles to essential academic publishers. Popular bestsellers, such as New York Times lists, are not only important for stress relief for hardworking students, but also provide content for current events and topics, both for STEM and humanities disciplines. Essential academic publishers and imprints are part of our catalog as well, so you can select texts from trusted publishing houses such as Elsevier, Wiley, and Springer. Overdrive delivers premium academic titles. In total, the number of titles available to the academic community in ebook and audiobook formats is over 3 million. Our catalog of titles is constantly refreshed with new titles from the publishers you're familiar with. We provide digital curriculum support as well. With access to premium scholarly publishers, providing digital curriculum support has never been easier. Regardless of discipline or topic, Overdrive's catalog can supply title support STEM to stern face figures of history and literature. Overdrive is pleased to partner with a variety of university press publishers as well. You'll find publishers included in our catalog, such as the University Presses of Cambridge, Columbia, Cornell, George Mason, Harvard, Indiana, John Hopkins, Kent State, Ohio State, Princeton, Purdue, Rutgers, Temple, and many more. I'd like to note that as I've been going through this part of the slide deck, uh, the titles that you see featured in the covers have been pulled from fall 2020 course reserve reading lists from a Midwest public library, so or Mid Midwest public university. So there's a variety of things that are available that are actually in use now at different universities. Overdrive was very excited to roll out in September the metered ac access concurrent use MACQ lending models. Titles can be borrowed by multiple users concurrently until all checkouts are used. There are currently over 40,000 titles available for concurrent use to college libraries. Because MACQ allows up to 100 concurrent users at a time, utilizing this model is a great option for book clubs, reserve, and required readings. Because most of the MACQ model titles are available for under $500 for up to 100 concurrent users, your library can be the required reading hero that your students need and value. Providing popular titles for pleasure reading is also important to academic libraries, which is where Overdrive can provide one-stop shopping. With access to the largest publishing houses, bestsellers, front and back catalogs, the freshest titles are available to keep holdings energized. Your campus community represents a broad diversity of unique individuals. By providing material in both digital print and audio, with eBooks and Libby using dyslexic and bifocal friendly typefaces, academic and pleasure titles, both experienced and novice digital users can enjoy a catalog of titles as diverse as they are. Commuters, remote learners, and dormitory dwellers will all appreciate the lightweight, space-saving advantages digital media offers on the devices that they already use. By having access to both scholarly and popular materials through OverDrive, there's no need for students, faculty, and staff to straddle two or more library systems and memberships, such as your academic library and the local community libraries from your students' hometowns. All their reading needs can be sourced through an OverDrive digital library. Because the OverDrive library is always open, your academic library can always be available to your students when your students need access, providing a stable source of materials for their chaotic college lives. And with that little part, I'm going to pass it back over to Lindsay. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lynn. So I am going to, we've heard about all of this great stuff, and I'm going to actually do a demo of some of the things um, that your users would see and some of the resources that we have available. So I'm gonna switch my screen over here right now and hopefully everybody is seeing a screen that says my digital library. So the Libby app is a, has become our main user experience. It is the mobile app. Um, we do offer browser-based. Um, so the libbyapp.com can be used in a browser. Essentially is gonna be the same visual experience as you would see on an app. 
Um, but once logged in, this is what a user would see. In, with authentication, we hook up authentication from a variety of different methods, including easy proxy, direct ILS, um, federated single sign-on type authentication, as well as our own experience, which is user login manager, which gives you the ability to upload your own users and manage those from a database that we give you access to. So this is what Libby would look like. This is the user experience. I am currently signed into my digital library. Once I'm signed in, I can basically get started and start browsing all of the titles in this collection here. A um, couple of different ways to do it. You can set preferences, which is really great because if you are an audiobook listener and you just want to look at audiobooks, you can select that or just ebooks. Language, so you can set certain languages you may want to see titles in audience. So whether you're looking at juvenile, YA, or just general content for adults. Um, compatibility. Um, compatibility with Kindle, if you're looking for that. Not all titles are compatible with Kindle, but I would say majority of the eBooks are. And then availability, if you just wanna look at things that are available now, and I'm gonna do that because I just wanna look at titles that I can check out now. Now you are able to place holds on titles if they currently are checked out. I'm gonna check out a couple of titles here. I'm gonna check out an audiobook here. I actually always wanted to listen to this. Um, and another note that with the audiobook titles, um, you can play a sample if you want to listen to the narrator to see how it is. Um, also with the audiobooks, we are compatible with um, Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. So you can listen to the audiobook in the car, which is really awesome. So I checked out this audiobook here. And I'm going to go back and check out an ebook too. When you click on any of these details page, you're going to see the number of copies that are available. So you can purchase multiple copies of titles if you want to. The duration, so this is approximately 10 hours, um, just description of the title here. So I've checked that out. I'm going to go back and I want to check out an ebook just so I can show you that user experience. Um, let's go check out one we were actually talking about here. So same thing, um, book, uh, the author, publisher, um, the release date, again, copies. So there are one of two copies available. Somebody has the other copy checked out. What I'm gonna do is click on borrow. So I have this as well. So we have several different standard lending periods, seven, 14, and 21 days are the lending periods. You can choose to offer all of them one of them, two of them, however you want to set the lending settings for your library, you can do that. So I'm going to click borrow here. I've got a couple titles checked out. I'm going to go to my bookshelf so I can just see everything that I have checked out right now. Um, I would be able to see if I put holds on any titles, if I tagged any titles, um, but these are my loans here. I'm going to start with the ebook here. Just click on this. And I'm going to read in Libby here, but I could send it to another device or Kindle. So I'm going to read here. And this is the user experience. This is how it would look on the mobile experience as well. I'm loading this ebook. So it's pretty easy. You can just start paging through the title here. And there are a lot of different settings that you can use when reading titles. So I'm just paging through here normally. You have the ability to um, do a couple of things. You can change the view if you just wanted to look at one page as opposed to two. For the font here, you can change the appearance. If I wanted to increase the text size, I can do that. If I wanted to change the lighting, so we have bright, which is what we're currently in. We have a sort of a middle of the road setting here and then a dark mode. You can also change the font if you wanted to change the font of the, the reading of that title. And we also have dyslexic font. So this is open dyslexic. Um, it's designed to increase the readability of text for readers with dyslexia. Publisher's default here. So a couple of other things. Um, you have the ability to search. If you want to search within the book, you can do that and find a certain passage. 
you're also able to bookmark and highlight within the title here. So if I was reading and I wanted to put in a bookmark here, I wanted to stop reading, I can put in the bookmark right there. I also have the ability here to um, jump between chapters if I want to do that sort of a navigation tool here. It will stop, it will leave off where you where you left off. You can pick back up on that. But this is sort of just a more, more visual. You can see the number of pages, the page that you're on, all that stuff here within the ebook. I'm going to go back to my shelf here. And I'm going to listen to the audiobook here. This is the audiobook experience. Um, pretty easy as just as clicking play to get started and listen to that audiobook. Same thing down at the bottom. This is the navigation. Um, you can speed up the narration if you wanted to, this little icon right here. I can speed it up or uh, so if you're a really fast listener and you want to slow it down or speed it up, you can do that. Another thing is that's really cool with the audiobooks is you can put a sleep timer on. So if you wanna fall asleep to this, you're able to preset a sleep timer, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, um, and then it'll stop playing um, when it hits that, that timer. Also with the audiobooks, you can take you can bookmark pages or, or where you're at specifically in the audiobook to come back to. And so that is the audiobook experience within Libby. So Libby is pretty straightforward. It's a very great app to use. Um, you can connect uh, not only through the academic cards, but you can hook up to the public library as well. So a student or faculty member could be logged in to have, share a bookshelf for both the, uh, the college as well as their public library. Next, I wanted to go over to a couple of other resources that we have for um, our academic partners as well as end users. Our OverDrive Resource Center, so I hope that changed over for everybody. This is a really great resource that we have for our library partners. So we want to help you make this successful. So we have marketing and outreach materials. We have a whole team dedicated to doing amazing marketing pieces for you. We also can customize marketing pieces. So there's a lot of different campaigns that are going on based upon holidays or themes or months. But the best are the going here to the print ready ones. These are sort of standard uh, marketing pieces to help get the word out to uh, end users. So I have a lot of academic partners that are constantly trying to come up with ways that they can do that to promote it. So we've got bookmarks, flyers, half sheets, um, a lot of different things. And we can customize for you, as I said, um, and some social ideas here. We are also able to provide what we call swag. I have a, an academic library coming up here in the next couple of weeks that is having a sort of virtual in-person, um, virtual and in-person uh, thing at their library. And so they wanted some swag so we can send out buttons and pens and all that great stuff. And you can also customize marketing pieces. Okay. Back to the home page here. So staff training. Staff training is something that we also really want um, uh, the, the library staff to in, in fully engage with so they can help end users and faculty. We have webinars that are constantly going on presented by our training team, but we also have a lot of on-demand webinars um, that, are, that are published there. The how-to videos um, are really great places to get started, not only for end users, but for for library staff as well. So this is going to basically outline how to get started in Libby, how to search for titles in Libby, um, borrowing and managing loans, placing and managing holds. So those great training videos that we offer. We can also do on-demand training for you. So that is the Resource Center. Um, in addition to those that I went over on the Resource Center, we also have some um, collection development um, resources here to help with with collection development and choosing the titles for your collection as well as some of the features if you want to learn about enhancements and features to the app for maximizing your your library another great thing that we have is our overdrive help page 
So we have a whole team dedicated to help articles and making the user experience better and helping people uh, figure out where they're at in the process if they have a question, if they run into any troubles. So this is the overdrive help here separated out into categories. So if I wanted to get started and I just wanted to look at how to get started with audiobooks, I'm able to see all sorts of articles borrowing audiobooks. So if you have a question there on how to borrow on a different device, helps you get started in that aspect. We also have a support team um, that is really good, really responsive. Um, usually within 24 hours, they will get back to you um, and help answer your question and troubleshoot what's going on. So that is the OverDrive help. And I want to, we have a couple of extra minutes here. And what I'm gonna do is pop over to Marketplace. Um, and that, just wanna kind of give you a brief overview of what Marketplace looks like. So everybody's screen should switch over here to Marketplace. This is the administrator experience of OverDrive. This is where you would get access to, you can, um, this is where you purchase content, check reports, curate your collection, get invoices. It's all here in Marketplace. So this is the main administrative portal. I am using a demo account um, that we have for OverDrive. So it may not, some of the title, availability may look a little bit different than what you would see in your actual marketplace. But just going over some of the tabs here, um, some of the features in invoicing and view invoices, this is where you can find all of your invoices that you have, as well as the amount of content credit that you have on file, content credit for purchasing titles. Um, all the invoices are located here and they can be paid here as well. Admin tab, so this is where you would go and manage your settings. So you could set the lending settings, you could set the um, number of titles that a user can borrow, all those settings here in the admin tab. Another thing I wanted to point out are the MARC records. So that is important to a lot of academic libraries. We have a couple of different avenues for getting MARC records. Overdrive Mark Express records are free minimum bib records that are uploaded here to Marketplace 24 hours after you purchase. It's got, of course, the, the minimum bib information as well as a link to the title details page of that title on your site. So in addition to the free records, we also offer uh, paid records, OCLC and eBibliophile. They are paid records, but they are more customizable. They are coming directly from that, that MARC record vendor, and you can do a little bit more customization, but you would be billed for those records through OverDrive, and you would have those records delivered to you. Okay. Insights tab, which is pretty cool, but you're able to see all the statistics, real-time view of what's going on, um, with your users, with your circulation, the amount of titles that you currently have in your collection, you're able to see that current activity. So how many titles are currently checked out? How many holds do we have? An average waiting period? All that data in here. Um, trends, which is really great uh, representation of your, your checkouts year over year, um, your unique users year over year. Popular reports, of course, checkouts is probably the most popular report you're gonna need here. Um, and what's great about the reports is you can export all of them to Excel and you can set different variables that you wanna look at the report by. So if I wanted to run a new report and I just wanted to take a look at subjects, I wanted to look the data by subjects or I wanted to look at it by month, I can set that. If you have multiple campuses, um, different branches, we call branches, um, you can set those up so you can view statistics from individual branches as well as a whole. Um, so I'm gonna play around with some of this here. I just wanna look at month, check out from the last 30 months. And if I click update there, it's gonna show me that data. In all of the reports are exportable to Excel spreadsheets, which is really nice because you have, that way you can export that data and, and use it how you need to. 
So that is the insights. And I figured I'd go into a little bit more of, of the content piece of Marketplace and not just the administrative features. Um, Rachel had mentioned sales and we do uh, have a lot of sales that are going on. And you're gonna find those primarily on the homepage when you're looking anything that is crossed out and you see a, a red price there, that is, that is a discounted title. Um, they are frequently, right now we have a Hispanic Heritage Month sale going on. So a lot of great ways to do collection development um, with your budget. The uh, insights over here, it's really cool because you can auto populate, see the uh, top 200 titles that maybe that you don't have in your collection, whether it's ebook or audiobook. And if I click on that, this is kind of a good way to look at the lending models that are available. It is, um, certain publishers have certain lending models. Um, it really just depends upon what they wanna offer. So I am looking at all eBooks, so there will be no audiobooks in these results. You can tell that is an eBook here because it's got the little book and it's showing you that with that purchase, you're getting um, Kindle, Overdrive Read, which is uh, the streaming version essentially, and Adobe EPUB, which is the downloadable version. Um, you can see the lending model here. So something in here that says MA, this is metered access, which is meaning uh, after 24 months, the title will expire. It is still one copy, one user though. Looks like my screen is freezing here. Oh, there we go, okay. And so you would just build carts of titles. You can have a lot of different carts going. Um, my academic libraries have a lot of different selectors. So they set up accounts for many different selectors. Everybody gets to go in. If it, they have a certain subject area specialty, they create their carts um, for that. And everybody just kind of reviews um, the titles that they wanna purchase. This is an instance of one that has a, basically a selection of whether you want metered access for 12 months, one user, or 24 months. There is a price difference. Let's see if I can find some other lending models here. You're going to find a lot of the pop popular publishers are metered access, especially if they're brand new titles. Here's one that is a one copy, one user. So again, one copy to one user. It remains in perpetuity in your collection. It is not going to expire. And so creating carts is pretty easy. You just go in and you know click create cart here and you're able to name it and then just start adding titles to that cart. And when you're ready um, to review all of those carts, you're able to come up to the top here. Oh, I also wanted to mention on the filtering. So if you do a search using the advanced search, it can be a lot of results, depending on how specific you get. The really nice thing on the left-hand side here is there's always going to be a filter. So you could filter out by lending model. Let's say you only wanted to see one copy, one user titles, you can filter that out. And subject, so let's say I just wanna look at biographies, and you can exclude certain subjects if you want to. Traditional publishers or indie publishers. Street date essentially means published date. We call it the street date. Price on sale. So if you just wanted to look at titles on sale, you could do all of that. So I uh, put some filters on here for just looking at biography. Now this is only a 200 title search result. So it wasn't very large, but let's say I just wanted to look at the biographies there. That's what I'm gonna get um, for my results. So that's a great way to help with collection development here. And a couple of other the lending models that Rachel mentioned under the shop. Cost per circ um, is a really great way to do collection development, especially if you have a limited budget. You're able to add these um, to your collection not paying for them, you are gonna pay per circulation. So if you're not sure if a title is gonna be popular or circulate, this is a good way to kind of dip your toe in the water with those titles. You would just add them by clicking on add CPC title. And if you wanted to revoke it at any time, you can click revoke here and it would remove it. The way that CPC is charged, it is adds up all the circulations for the month and you get one invoice for that. And any content credit that you have on file will cover that if you choose to have it covered. Um, 
by that. So another note about the models, it can be confusing. There are a lot of different models, but from a user's perspective, they are not going to know any differently. Everything is going to look the same to them. It's on the back end how those are managed, um, whether they're cost per CERC or regular one copy, one user. Um, that's all going to be managed in the back end here. So that is kind of an overview highlight of Marketplace. I'm always happy to do more in-depth demos of Marketplace. If you're looking at certain features, you want to talk about something specific, I'm always happy to do that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And I think we are ready for uh, the Q&A. Great. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you, Lynn and Rachel. Um, we've got a bunch of questions here. So um, we'll just start working through those um, that have come through. And it looks like we've got um, a few questions from a little bit earlier in the in the presentation. Um, and that uh, we'll go through just to get them here on the recording. Um, and I think this is a question that came in let's see sorry just move over here um a little earlier um we have a question here from dave who asks um how does overdrive metadata incorporate into an ils or into a discovery layer and i think maybe um lindsay do you know how that works can you speak to that Sure, so I, I spoke a little bit about the MARC records, um, whether you're getting them free for us or through a vendor, OCLC or eBibliophile. We also have APIs that you're able to use um, with discovery layers. Um, so we have a whole API team dedicated to development of that, but that would that is how it would be discoverable through the ILSs with the records. Great, that makes, that makes sense. Excellent. Uh, We've got uh, another question here, and I think maybe this one uh, you spoke to a little bit, Rachel. Um, so I'll, I'll throw it your way, and if you know anybody else wants to jump in and, and speak to it, you're welcome to do so. Um, but the question here is for the titles that we already own in OC or OU, if we add that title with concurrent users, do the holds on that copy automatically fill if uh, by using the concurrent use copy? Or, do they or does a librarian have to go search for those somehow and transfer the holds and get into all that sort of stuff? Um, yeah, happy to answer that with my little assistant here. Um, they automatically fill the holds, so there's no need to go searching or matching or transferring holds like that. Yes, hi. <laughs> Excellent, and great to see your, your cat there. <laughs> All right. Um, looking through some more of these questions that are coming in. Um, we have a question here that, that says simply, what, what about titles that are sort of more community college oriented? Uh, and the writer says, I found for the most part that like Wiley, Springer, Elsevier, those are for upperclassmen, for juniors and seniors. Um, can any of you uh, speak to the sort of uh, freshman and sophomore level um, texts that maybe are available through Overdrive? I think I can answer that briefly. Um, the nice thing about Overdrive is that we've got all levels of books, all reading levels, so that takes care of any sort of reading level and any sort of content level that your uh, that your students might need. So while in the presentation that I gave, I was showing the uh, examples from Wiley and Elsevier and Springer, we have all sorts of different levels that are suitable to community colleges, technical colleges, um, whatever your needs are. Just in the breadth of time that we had here, I, there's no time to show everything. But uh, that's what the uh, marketplace uh, is for, so that you can take a look and see the variety of things that we do have. Excellent. So yeah, it, you can do some shopping around and, and have a look and there's all sorts of stuff in there. Great, great. All right, um, next question that we've got teed up here uh, looks like um, 
it starts out, does Overdrive Professional have representatives that cater to the African, and in particular, the South African market? Um, is that something you could speak to, Lindsay? Sure, so we actually have a Overdrive representative that is in South Africa. Um, that works to um, do presentations, answer questions, do demos for uh, libraries in South Africa. We have a couple of South African colleges and public libraries currently. Excellent, great. Um, and I assume that if somebody's looking for that, they can find it on the Overdrive website or how, how can they find those contacts? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you can always um, email sales at overdrive.com or professional at overdrive.com um, and it will filter to all of us that, that can help you. Um, someone will take the lead on it and, and help answer your questions and direct you in the right place. Great, great, thanks. Um, so we've got another question uh, that, that came in a bit earlier that says, how is pricing determined for academic libraries? Do you re rely on FTE? And I know there are all sorts of different models, but just to, uh, for specific titles and publishers and those sorts of things, um, but does FTE f factor into that? Yeah, is, well, as far as title price, it does not. Um, the academic price is the academic price. Um, in most instances, it's about the same price as the public library copy would be. Um, but yeah, there's no difference for co title cost based upon FTE. Great, great. Um, another question that came in a little while ago was, um, is the recommend to library feature available in Libby? It is not currently. That is something that our development team is working on, is making that compatible with Libby. Great, great. Um, next question that I've got here um, is, are audiobooks compatible with uh, hearing devices? What sort of compatibility features uh, does Libby offer? I actually have to get back to you on that question because okay. I'm not sure and I don't want to speak out of turn if I if I don't know the answer. Sure, sure. All right, so we will look into that. We'll find out. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> um, and uh, another question that came in a little while ago was, so where does the extra metadata come from? For example, one of the books um, was noted that it was on a New York Times bestseller list and those sorts of things. So where is Overdrive pulling that stuff from or is it manually put in? How, how does that work? We get the data stream directly from publishers. So what you're seeing as the subject, the description, the reviews, all that stuff is coming directly from the publishers. Excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so we have uh, another question here that says, does Overdrive work with Gobi? Are there minimum spends or, or does o is Overdrive totally separate from that? How, how, how does that work? <laughs> if um, somebody's using Gobi or, or some other purchasing system like that. Yeah, we currently are not compatible with Gobi. Um, we've had a lot of requests for that. And I, I know that I've made it known to some of the development team that it's something that we are interested in, in having compatible. Okay, great, great. Um, so um, another question sort of about reporting and the sorts of things that, that you can pull out of uh, the back end there on in Overdrive. Um, does Overdrive support counter five statistics and sushi and those sorts of things that libraries are using? That is another thing. Same thing, <laughs> same answers to the previous one, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a work in progress as yeah. everything is, yeah, yeah. It's not, all right. Um, and maybe you can speak to this uh, a little bit too. Are, are titles available for per purchasing perpetual access or are all of the titles for a certain time period, 12 months, 24 months, that sort of thing? Um, Rachel, you wanna answer that one? Yeah, sure, I can take that one. Um, yes, we do have some that are the perpetual access. That's the one copy, one user model. And then anything that's um, labeled as metered access is where it's for 20, 
24 months or 12 months or 26 checkouts, but oftentimes there are titles that where you have the option to pick. Great, thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, the cost per circ model, if and the question goes, if there's leftover money at the end of the month, uh, does that roll over to the next month or how does that work with the cost per circ? Um, yeah, I can jump on that one. It, um, it would roll over to the next month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Um, and we've got a question here that I can answer. Um, and the question is, are you going to provide a copy of the recording for future reference? And yes, in fact, um, we're recording this webinar and everybody that signed up should receive an email with a link to the recording. Um, it'll be up on our, our website, choice360.org, as well as on our YouTube channel. Um, and so you should be able to find it in a variety of places. And it should come right to you as well. So, <laughs> um, so we've got a question here, uh, and I think this maybe should go to Lindsay. Uh, do you have any plans for school libraries? Um, could you use some of the stuff that you showed in a school library setting? So we actually, yes, we do have a full uh, K through 12 school platform. It's called Sora and it is, the app is different. It is not the Libby app, it is the Sora app and it is geared towards K through 12 education. Excellent. Uh, great. And so we've got another question here, uh, even though we're coming up right on the end of the hour. Um, is there a way that, that someone could submit a book list to find, if, find out if certain titles are available or, you know, that sort of thing? Absolutely, yeah, I'm happy to do that to, to cross check for you. Um, all you would need to really do is, my email address is not up there, but you could email professional at overdrive.com. It'll probably be directed to me um, and just a list of the titles that you're looking for and I can cross check them for you. Excellent. Great. So looking at the time, as I want to do, apparently, um, we're coming up on the end of the hour. And I would just take a second to um, say, first off, thank you, Lindsay and Lynn and Rachel, for taking the time to put together the presentation to, uh, and to give it to everybody out there. Uh, we appreciate your doing that. Um, and I would say, uh, uh, of course, thank you to everybody out there listening in. We appreciate your uh, taking the time to join us today. Um, and we hope to see you in the near future on another webinar. Um, I would also point out that uh, when you sign out today, you should be directed to um, a quick survey. If you have a couple of minutes um, to just answer five or six questions, um, and really if you only want to answer three or four, that's fine too. Um, we really do appreciate um, your taking the time to give us a little bit of feedback. It helps us improve um, the software, our presentations, all of that sort of stuff. So we really do value your feedback. So if you have a second, we'd appreciate your taking the time to give it. And with that, we are um, ready to go. So I will say thank you everyone and I hope the rest of your day is great. <laughs>